Hi, this is Natalie Lander, voice of Kinsey, Tara Brandford, Stargirl, and many others. You are listening to a W2Mnet podcast. You can visit W2Mnet.com for other podcasts about entertainment, video games, sports, and wrestling. You are listening to Video Games to the Max. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Video Games to the Max. This is episode 262, and I am your host, Sean Garman, here along with me as always, Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. No guests this week. Part of that is the one thing that really sucks about going back to the office is that it takes me 45 minutes to get home. So... It's already hard enough for poor Mark to have to wait on me. <laughs> I don't want people that don't uh, sort of have to be on this show to have to wait even longer. So, yeah, but uh, I'm still working on talking to a few people. So maybe, uh, hopefully, by like the time we get to March, we get some some more guests on. Yeah. But um, with a certain game coming out soon, I'm sure Jens will be on too to talk about uh, that old Persona Strikers. Which, if you already got the deluxe digital edition, you can play that right now. Yeah, so, he has been. Yeah, I'm sure that he is super stoked, right? Uh, so, he's like, he said he's like four hours into it, and he really likes it so far. That's good. That's uh, that's a positive thing. Is that he's, that, I mean, he's. Let's hope he he keeps trudging through. That'd be good. So you have to wait till that. Yeah, I'm getting the physical thing. one uh next week. So anything special on that, or just. Uh, it's a steelbook. Well, I'm getting, getting like an extra case, like a steelbook case. So, okay. I know you like those steelbooks. So, yeah, that's that's a good thing. He's going that uh, direction. I mean, plus it is like physical copy of the game. So, <laughs> and that's one I want to own. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's that is a cool one to own. So, I'm actually kind of annoyed because I know like in I think Japan got like a special edition, you know, like a hundred dollar you know version or whatever, and we didn't. <laughs> that's that's always weird to me sometimes how like they know that the fan base is big here too. Like you wouldn't yeah. release that, you know? I saw, like I saw uh, one of the voice actresses, I think for Futaba, she posted like she got like a copy of the game from Atlas and it looked like it looks like some weird special edition that they made. Like it came with like a water bottle and like some stickers or some you know, some other crap with it. Yeah. And it's or like maybe it's just ones they give to the Crew like or, crew, yeah. yeah. Like hers, like has like a like a coffee cup and call it coffee beans for some reason, and then like a pocky sticks and some other like things. And it's like, why don't we get that? You know, or why does it? Why aren't they <laughs> selling it like to the public? <laughs> like, come on, uh, gotta give some swag that's not for everybody, right? Yeah. So but, yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say yeah. Even like, well, even in Japan, they have like a special edition, like with soundtracks and like a wallet and like an art book and. You know, a whole bunch of other crap. So what's like, what happened? <laughs> is that the only, uh, physical one? The one you got? Or yeah. Is there a, okay. There's like a quick, I think GameStop, you get like the regular game, but you get like a keychain, and it's like, no? That's weird. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, you'd think GameStop, there'd be one with the soundtrack, and. Yeah. What do you but, get with the one Yen's got just to get to play it early? And. Uh, you get like, I think you get like a few extra digital bonus, like goodies. Like mine has a, it has some code in it for like some stuff, not everything, but that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't need it. You know. So I'm trying to figure out how to turn off this freaking fan. Yeah. Okay, that's the one that turns it off. All right. It'd be nice if you just all ceiling fans should follow the same code. Just you, pr- the last one you press is the one that turns it off. <laughs> so, uh, but no, that's uh. So next week. We'll be able to, or I don't know, maybe if you guys trudge through it, uh, well, yeah. since Yen's is always halfway there, maybe we can do like a special, uh, thing on it or something. i sure. you guys talking about it before we get to Friday, if, if that happens. Yeah. Uh, so I'm waiting on Bravely Default 2, and then, uh, I'm, I have a code request in for the Retromania game. So we'll see if I get a response on that by Monday. 
So I'll probably be playing those two as I'm pretty much at the end of East, uh, nine, but other responsibilities, uh, editing and that kind of thing, uh, have, uh, gotten in the way. And of course, having to go to this job, which means I lose an hour of being able to do things because I have to leave an hour early just to get there. So that, uh, that being said, I forgot to mention, we, of course, are the official video games podcast of W2Net.com. And also, uh, last word on gaming, which I'm <clears throat> sort of like an editor without the title there right now. So I was doing a lot of that <clears throat> with the direct going on. I was the one like, hey, my stuff's ready. All right. I did it. And then I wrote a thing on a certain folks uh, getting into Smash, which we'll talk about. But just because this is a little bit fresher uh, than the Nintendo one, and I feel like you probably heard everybody talk about the Nintendo one at this point. So we'll talk about it. I'm not going to go through every... We're not going through every announcement. Uh, we'll just talk about some of the big stuff and anything that you know we were particularly excited about, which there was a few things. Uh, for me, I'm not... I don't know about you, uh, Mark. And... That, uh, being also that BlizzCon had their first, uh, is it the first two days now or the, f- just one day? Uh, I think it's two, cause I think tomorrow maybe like all their, key, all their like conference stuff or all that goofy crap they do. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Uh, so of course the big announcement, which everybody knew about by now, but it's a Diablo 2 is getting the official remaster. It's called Diablo 2 Resurrected. The trailer looked really nice with the 3D graphics. So that looks cool. I mean, I didn't get to f- enjoy Diablo when it was uh, out and the, you know, literally the greatest thing since sliced bread at the time. I played it like way later when I, you know, Diablo 3 was already out and everything. See, I didn't play Diablo on PC when it came out at all, but I actually had a, I had a PS1 copy of Diablo. And yeah. Yeah, that was super, that was super weird. <laughs> I played the PS1 version of Diablo 1 on, on an emulator. It, it yeah. is weird. <laughs> because, well, it's weird for two reasons. Like, like, you're not really supposed to walk diagonally. So when you do that in the game, it kind of screws it up. Like, <laughs> enemies can't really handle it, which is funny. And then, like, the other thing I remember is, so that, like, the regular Sony, like, memory card had 15 blocks of space. Right. And most games only took, like, one block. Like, certain games took more. But, like, I think Diablo took, like, five blocks per save. <laughs> Damn. And it's like, that's, you know, a third of the card. <laughs> like, Do you have a uh, stand that wobbles? No. Oh, it sounds like every, I don't know, ten seconds, you sound like something's wobbling. Nope. On your side. I don't know what that is, but... Uh, so, what? yeah, I know, like, okay, so, I mean, the thing with Diablo 1 also, <laughs> the graphics were so... <laughs> I didn't they even were know. Of the era. <laughs> yeah, they were of the era. They were fine. But I mean, so like, it's cool. They showed obviously the original and then showing the, the 3D graphics for Diablo 2. Uh, obviously it looks a lot better. Um, I mean, the cool thing is here, it's not just PC, it's consoles as well. So they have yeah. fully adapted to the whole, well, Diablo really needs to be on consoles after, uh, how great 3 performed. And yeah, and it has cross progression too. So if you want to get it on PC and then also have the console version, that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, that's, that's fun for the people that maybe you have like a solo PC player. And then if you have a friend that plays, you know, on console and you want to like bring in your save because you can do that. So, right. Yeah. Are you going to get it on PC or console? Uh, I'll probably get it on PS5. Or PS4, I play the end, hopefully. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Well, it's PS5, PS4, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, interesting that it was only Xbox Series, no Xbox One, so. Yeah, maybe, it uh. It, it can't handle the awesome power of Diablo. <laughs> or maybe X, Microsoft's finally, like, letting some of that go. About, like, we don't have to, what's the point of making games for a console that when you think about it, it was bought excessively less than the uh, PS4. So, what install base are you really missing out on? Right uh, at that point, like so, and especially by the time this game comes out, uh, which yeah, it says 2021 right now, but will it actually 
appear in 2021. We'll see. Uh, oh, so, we all, I mean, yeah. We all know that Blizzard is renowned for hitting the release dates. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even for, especially with what happened with Warcraft 3 before, you gotta make sure that this one comes out good because you can't have two remakes come out bad. That's actually the funniest thing is, I, I mean, I didn't watch the whole, uh, conference or anything, but it's like kind of read the, what was going on. And I don't think they mentioned the game once. <laughs> Like, throwing in a, hey, we're fixing these parts of the game would have been nice, but apparently not. No, I think they, I wonder if they just abandoned it, or maybe yeah. they're going to, like, come back to it after Diablo Zoo. No, I think it's probably pretty much done, or, you know. Well, aside from Diablo 2, which, I mean, look, uh, it is it is one I, of the landmarks in gaming. Yeah, we never uh, played, like, I never played it either. I think, I think I actually do have it. Uh, but I just never played it. I have it too. I played it for a little bit, but by then Diablo 3 was also already out, so. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. Cause there was a pretty long gap between Diablo 2 and 3, so by the time, yeah, Diablo 3 when it comes out, it's like, uh, I don't want to play this 8 year old PC game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was the, uh, the thing too, of just, well, you got Diablo 3 on console, I'm not going to keep playing this, so it just kind of went into those, well, I bought it, and it's there, and it's a cool, as a cool uh, box that I can look at every now and then, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, it's good that this is, this is happening, I know there are a lot of people that uh, want to go back to that, very much to, um, much like the WoW Vanilla crowd. Right. Um, so, that's, well, that's a cool that, thing to have that. That got an uh, announcement also, too. <laughs> Yeah, it did. Um, we'll, I'll get to that in a sec, but. Yeah. Of course, obviously the important part is going forward with Diablo 4. Last year they announced the three characters, Sorcerer, Druid, and Barbarian, along with the, of course, the announcement trailer. Um, so then this year the big reveal is the Rogue class, which you said it hasn't been around since Diablo 1. Yeah. So that's cool. I'm always either a mage, sorcerer, whatever, or a uh, rogue, because they're the ones that get to use the bow or long range, and they can go in with those quick attacks. So um I'm happy that there's a rogue class for Diablo 4. And plus, the trailer looks pretty awesome. Love the whole thing with the priest, and then she's uh like, I'm just a murderer. What are you going to do about that? And then you find out he has, he has his own secrets, too. So, right. cool. Um don't want to spoil it to people who haven't watched that that uh trailer. You should go watch it. It's pretty good. So I, I that's one thing I will say. Blizzard has always been great about their cinematic uh trailers. Then once the game comes out, that's uh, another thing well, entirely. I, I have a Blizzard friend and she I don't know if she heads up the department, but she works like Blizzard Cinematics. <laughs> yeah. I, oh she does? That's pretty cool. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's the department producer for like the cinematic like Blizzard in game cinematics, so <laughs> Well, there you go. I mean, so definitely uh, should go check that out. I'm sh- I don't know how much more if if they're gonna show anything. I mean, they did have a was it a like 45 minute Diablo two like roundtable discussion thing. Yeah. So you know you can go watch that too. I'm sure that they talk a lot about the game there. Uh, the thing that Mark mentioned is that you know of course Vanilla WoW uh, had a resurgence and. Well, if you're going to do Vanilla WoW, you got to kind of keep it going, right? Uh, so the first expansion, Burning Crusade, is also coming to Vanilla WoW. And you can decide if you want your character to leave Vanilla WoW forever and go on to Burning Crusade or not. So we'll see. Uh, what do you think? Uh, it's kind of interesting to think, won't let, or I mean, it may become a paid, paid service later, but they can't copy characters over, or, you know, have, you know, the char- same character on both games, you know? I mean, that just seems like Blizzard wanting you to... doing exactly that. They want to figure out a way to monetize that. Yeah. So if you wanted to do it, you can, but hey, you gotta give us a little bit of money, because we gotta find a way to nickel and dime you. If you press a switch. (laughs) I mean, Burning Crusade's pretty alright. That's like the one one expansion I remember playing, like, way back in the day. Uh, I think that was like 2007, I think. Uh... Yeah, I remember, like, back in the day, like, the server for that thing was, like, barely working. <laughs> yeah, I mean, God, thinking about 2007 internet. Yeah. What was, what was that? Like, the first, like, I remember the first area, I forget the name of it, but it's, like, this, like, kind of, like, uh, desolate wasteland with these, like, big robot things, like, wandering around. 
and like they would like bring the server down because like there was so much lag at the time with the robots. It's like, oh man, this is not good. <laughs> well, I mean, it, that's the. I mean, if it's not, I wonder how long it's going to take him to bring uh, Lich King in there. See, I, I see, I, I see this basically stopping with Lich King. Yeah, because Cat- Cataclysm is the one that like dramatically changed the world. Uh like kind of like flying in like the main world, you know, Azeroth. So I'm going to be Lich King, and that'll be it. Yeah, I think that's it. Like I agree with you on that. Like when I think of like the old WoWs, just from how I you know hear people talk about them, it's like. It's like what you said. Lich King is is that last one that feels like okay. This is this has to do with Warcraft three. There's stuff yeah. here, you know. Like after that, it just it turned into a different thing, um, right? So, yeah. Hopefully, they don't keep trying to just oh well, you know. We'll put the keep putting the old like no. That the whole point is to this is supposed to feel different than like oh we're just gonna be one expansion behind on vanilla well like no that's that's not the point so i agree with you yeah, it, hopefully there is a it'd be it, cool it if was, they eventually got to the point where they started making expansions for just vanilla well but i don't know if they'll do that no they wouldn't yeah. split it up the, the user base up like that too much yeah yeah i just want to have like a drop down menu of like the, uh, the other eight expansions or whatever being like all right i want to play baseline world of warcraft legion or something like that but, like no <laughs> I don't. Well, I mean, I guess they could, but they'd probably charge for that too, right? Uh, knowing them, so no, I mean, because this is coming to this is coming free, so why not? Let's hope so. Uh, I mean, we don't play Hearthstone, but that's getting a new expansion again. So, cool. yeah, they keep trying, but I, I know the user base of that has slowly been dropping off. Or I still think that YouTube deal is really bad for them, like that. Uh, I mean, that was, that's a, a, a whole game that it's based on really being able to learn from watching other people play and having that be on the front page of Twitch a lot, I think helped keep that in the, the conversation when you're going over to YouTube, which I mean, like, that's the thing I think that like, as much as you want to say, YouTube is great for these one-off things like the Nintendo Direct. Right. Or something like that, that, you know, it's coming, you know, it's huge, whatever. Right. But I don't think that it's great for things that go on for several uh, hours at a time or whatever. It's like, I think people are just used to YouTube is that thing I watch on demand later. And Twitch is the thing that I watch when I want to watch something live. And YouTube also just doesn't have this great, like, front page um either so right you know i don't know it's I mean, yeah yeah I, I i i don't watch trit streaming but i like i will watch like a youtube compilation or like highlights of the stream right but yeah I'm looking I mean, but that doesn't help them because what they need is people watching consistently while that's going on so uh right you know i, I look i think that it's good that you're continuing to support what you have Right? Like, just get every last drip of you can until it really just, uh, I mean, cause it's always gonna have its players, I feel like. It's, I don't think it's gonna go the way of Heroes of the Storm. Cause, I mean, even though you do have a bunch of different card games out there that can definitely, uh, compete with it, and they still come out all the time. Uh, yeah. you know, Hearthstone is still, um, fairly big. So, I mean, it's, it's the biggest card game for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not like when Heroes of the Storm is coming out, you're competing with two giants that are not never went away and are still huge. So, um, you don't. That's the one niche that just didn't work for Blizzard, right? Uh, on that front. And speaking of the 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 old guard for for Blizzard, World of Warcraft Shadowlands is also getting an update, uh, change in domination. Yeah, I watched the trailer of that. That was okay. It's like, a, yeah, of course, the king is now evil. <laughs> well, I mean... That's the whole point of the expansion, is it, him being corrupted, it looked like, or seemed like, so... Well, I mean, I guess you get a new zone, so... Yeah, that's fine. But it's like, the old zones, they should have it also. Like, Blizzard always te- like teases out flying, because it's a way, you know, it's obviously a way to burn through a lot of content, you know, to wander around, 
you know, getting stomped yeah. on by regular enemies, but it's like, I just give me the mount or give me flying. Let me get on with my life. <laughs> I <laughs> imagine. I like, do, though. <laughs> yeah. I imagine flying will come eventually to like the, you know, the current zone, but it'll be some laborious or long ass process to like unlock it, you know? Yeah, probably. Uh, I, that's exactly what you said though. It's like, Blizzard knows what they're doing. <laughs> uh, kind of. <laughs> I, I mean, they don't want to just give it away because then, you know, people get through the expansion faster and then you got to figure out how you got to keep them there. And Yeah, but the flip side is also true because, like, I was making no progress, so that's why I don't have, feel the need to continue my expansion rate or my subscription right now because I'm not getting anywhere. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's it. You can only take so much of, like, going through the grind before it's like, well. I'm also paying for this, so right, exactly. I can spend that money on something else. Uh, the uh, one cool thing I think is, you know, we talked about this. Like, would they do like definitive or remastered versions of their old games so for you know Warcraft and WoW and all that? And they kind of have. It's called the Blizzard Arcade Collection, um, and Lost Vikings, Rock and Roll Racing, Blackthorn. Uh, they're all together in one package for 20 bucks, which that's not bad at all. And you can play them in the original or definitive mode. And so what is included in this Blizzard 30th Anniversary Celebration collection that makes it less or more expensive? Uh, this, that thing is like, it's basically a bunch of content for the current games. It's like a, it's like a, a wow. Mount oh, what they and, always do, where, hey, buy something Blizzard and get stuff for the other games, too. Yeah. Okay. Or oh, you get Overwatch skins and Diablo 3 items and, you know, the usual amount of crap. <laughs> okay, well, at least they are consistent <laughs> Yeah. with that. I mean, like, buy, yeah, uh, yeah, and lock in game content for WoW, Overwatch, Hearthstone, Diablo 3, and okay. Yeah, basically every, every uh, all their other games. <laughs> yeah, so you get what is it? Uh, you get the with uh, in new in-game items for Diablo three, uh, an Overwatch player icon and loot boxes. Okay, I mean, cool. Yeah, not worth sixty bucks though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't uh, spend sixty bucks on that, but I mean, there are different know. tiers, but yeah, like, nope. <laughs> Save you some money, folks. Don't need to need to go crazy spending on that. But all right, we go from one announcement brigade to the other one. Uh, Nintendo Direct, after over, what is it, 500 days of no big Nintendo Direct. We've had the Direct Minis, obviously, but they're not the same as having the official Nintendo Direct. And, well... There's definitely some things to be excited about, and then there's a lot of stuff that was just kind of like, did we really have to have 50 minute direct? Eh, I don't know. Why not? That, that, I mean, it's just, that was my thought of just like, did this really need to be this long? I had to watch it over two, um, lunch breaks because it was so long. And I mean, some of the, some of the announcements were really good. Like for me, I think the Mario Golf was one of the, the biggest ones. Uh, it's called Mario Golf Super Rush. I love the, like, speed mode. That looks like so much fun. Just, it's basically like when you play, like, mini golf and you kind of just, you go through and you're like, all right, everybody just run to the freaking thing and try to get there as fast as you can. And I liked it. And Yoshi, like, freaking traveling on an egg. That was, uh, uh that made me laugh uh, yeah. a little bit. I are you a Mario Golf? Uh? I played, I think, the first one. Wasn't it an N64 game? I know it had one on GameCube. Or I might have been, I, that might have been Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis was on uh, N64 for sure. I remember I played it a little, but not, you know, that not a ton. Let me see. It, no, there wasn't yes, it did. One. It did yeah. appear on the 64. Sorry. Yeah, that's one I remember playing like the most. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm always down for a non-serious golf game. Like everybody's golf is cool on the on PS4. So sure, why not? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in the story mode. I mean, we already have, uh, like, Golf Story that kind of showed you you can do something like that. Of course, that was sort of like an RPG that was, like, tongue-in-cheek with golf. Right. So, uh, 
we'll see how they do it with this because they did that same thing with Mario Tennis where they promised this great story mode and it wound up not being so great. So we'll see if uh, this one lives up to it. Um, using a me is, I guess, a way to have a created character. I'm not yeah, always. I, I would have loved the option to also not have to use a created character, but yeah, it's like people just want to play it as Mario, or you know, it's like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I get the idea of like seeing like, okay, well, this is you, and you're competing with them or against them or whatever. It, but it felt, give people the option. It seemed really weird because like they had this and that Metopia game they announced, or you know, the uh -huh. port of the 3DS one, and it's like Mii's are basically non-existent on the Switch. Yeah, you really like, have to go like deep in the menu to f remember that you. The only reason I remember that I have it is because if you go on the Nintendo website to uh, log in to your profile or or uh, you know buy anything, your profile. The first thing it shows you is your me. Yeah, like I hardly ever see it on the system at all. Right. So, I mean, uh, of course the the Metopia game was originally released on 3DS. That's just getting a port. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's fine. Like, I don't think that, you know, that that was my problem with a lot of this was like, you don't need, the, I mean, I get it that Nintendo kind of had to, it's been so long, we have to feel like we have to pad this out. But some of this stuff, like, did we really need to get those announcements? Like, you know, I mean, I don't yeah. mind because they don't have any, they don't have a traditional E3 presentation and yeah. You well, know, you know they're gonna, probably going to do one this year. I, I would much rather, like we talked about this last time, but I'd much have, rather have be like one just long, hour-long thing than doing a stupid uh, mini-direct every two weeks. And it's like, oh, we had this one game, we're going to talk about it for a half hour. It's like, no, don't. <laughs> well, no, I agree <laughs> with don't. that. I agree with that, but you also could have just done this a little bit shorter, and maybe, because I think that's part of the issue is, you have like some really big announcements and then you have stuff, the typical Nintendo stuff of, okay, we're announcing that this game that's been out for a year is finally coming to Switch. Like, okay, like, cool. But, like, I mean, I will say they didn't like stay too long on anything. Yeah. Other than the also, one that I mean, they really needed to, but every, everything kind of moved along. There's no like super long, like, oh, we're going to spend. 20 minutes talking about that triangle game or whatever. It's like, no, just trailer and just, let's just, I mean, uh, it's good that they did spend a little bit of time on it. Cause it's a new game, right? Like it's not like I'm sitting there going, cause when, I mean, I'm excited that, uh, Pyra and, uh, uh, Mithra are in smash. I wrote about it. So like, you know, Zenoblade 2 getting their characters in smash and I'm glad it's Mithra and Pyra and not Rex, who is Mr. Anime Vanilla, but, you know, uh, I'm happy, but I, I was going, oh God, don't tell me that 20 minutes of this direct is doing a Sakurai thing of telling us all about their attacks and everything else. No, they didn't do it, that. It, thank you. Know, it went five minutes and that was yeah. it. I was like, all right, fine. No, and I really liked the way that they introduced it. They didn't, uh, like basically give it away with the, the little smash icon at the beginning. They tried to dupe you. I thought we were getting, I was like, oh, cool. Cinnablade Chronicles 2 DLC, awesome. And then, oh, it's Fire and Smash. All right, well, awesome that too. I'm, I'm gonna buy it and then probably play as them for a little bit and then go back to not playing Smash. But yeah, it's like I'm gonna support them, you know. And I may even buy the the um, Amiibos when they come okay. out. So yeah. I'm sure Yens is gonna do the same thing too. But yeah, I I think this is cool. Like. You know, it's coming, what is, they said, uh, May or, is it March? March 4th? March 4th? I think it was uh, March. March. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, along with, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, they're gonna be the, the two March things. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, look, I get it that there's people that they're gonna get mad that this, there's another sword fighter in here and all that, but I mean, Sakurai oh. loves his swords. Yeah, so. to be fair, Smash doesn't have enough of those, enough of those guys, so. <laughs> it's, now you got only two left, so watch everybody go, well, it has to be Dante and Sora. We're not standing behind this anymore. Sorry, hey, man. Guys. You're Sora probably gonna get sword. one or he none. A, he has a big key. That's a big difference. <laughs> I know, I know that's the thing too, right? Like, he's a sword fighter too. It's just, I mean, I get it. Like, you want, talk about like, the ultimate Oh my god, the two companies that are basically mirrors of each other getting to be in the, in the one game 
you know? So, like, I get it. Like, people want that moment to be able to say, wow, Disney is in a freaking Nintendo game. And, you know, it's not like, oh, this is a Disney licensed thing that just happens to be on a Nintendo system. This is a Nintendo game. Like, you know, so uh, I get it. Like, I get that they want that moment. And just, like, Sora is such a big character for people. I mean, look, Sora's one of my favorite characters, too. I'm not, I'm going to... I'll be one of the ones that'll get super excited if he shows up, but I'm not also gonna, I'm gonna hold my breath on that. I'm not gonna go nuts if he doesn't because, look, it's logistical, like, Disney owns him just as much as Square Enix does. And you know, to get Disney to move on that, man, I don't know. It'll just, instead of that, it'll just be like Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> and I also feel like, with as much as Capcom is such a buddy with Nintendo at this point, like, if you were going to get Dante, I feel like you would have got Dante already. Yeah. You know, like, I get that he's such a huge uh, get for people. They want Dante to be in the game, but, like, why wouldn't she have had him before? You know? I could see it's, them, like, being weirdly... I mean, I'll, she's in it, or she's kind of owned by Nintendo at this point, but, like, Nintendo not wanting, like, M-rated characters in the game. I mean, aside from, like, Bayonetta. Right. I mean, uh, but they toned her down. I mean, he's... What is he going to do? Like, they have characters that have... Uh, well, Bayonetta has a gun herself, so I mean, like. Right. Yeah. I, I, her gunner, like, her gunner, like, literally on her shoes, you know? Like. Yeah. I, I don't think it has to do with that. It's just, maybe it's just one of those where Nintendo wants to. Or, or they just want to keep Dante for, like, Marvel vs. Capcom. That could, I mean, that could be it too. I just feel like, we gotta remember, it's just, Nintendo also wants to promote their properties as well. It's not just, oh, who's the biggest character we can get for this game? You know, it's not always that. So. Yeah, except for, except for Cloud. <laughs> but, I mean, but that's different. Like, you get the opportunity to be, have Final Fantasy or, in there. You know, like, like Joker or. <laughs> yeah. <Ryu>. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's like, again, look, Capcom has given them a lot of characters. So, like. Or, well, another good one is, like, Snake. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but Snake was one of the first ones that was, like, that moment yeah. of, oh, wow, they've really crossed over now. So. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could literally be, I'm still not throwing out there that, like, you know, Master Chief could be, you know, one of the characters. I mean, so, the only caveat that, you know, Sakurai's ever said is this, this needs to be a character that is actually based on a video game, not. Like, that's why, you know, Goku will never be in it, because he's not from a video game. So, I, I think, again, like, yes, should we be excited and get our hopes up for something huge for, like, the last two, and supposedly there's not going to be any more after this? I mean, of course, they said that before the last time, too, and you know, whatever. Um Do you... Yeah, I just... I think people just need to... Temper the expectations. Um, but Xenoblade was one of the ones, almost every time there was a Smash Direct or a Smash thing, uh, something about Xenoblade 2 getting a character, uh, somebody would, would make that, uh, something. So the fact that they listened and, you know, Pyro and Mithrid are in Smash, uh, that's, that's a good thing, I feel like. Um, you can make all the jokes and the, 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 of course, that's the one bad thing is this brought up the whole character design thing again. Uh, which, I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't talk about that. Go all for it. Uh, well, it's but always, I, yeah. I, 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 it's funny because like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I always think about that. That's the game that had like the 52 characters, I think, in it. Mm -hmm. And like half of them played the same. <laughs> they all played like Ryu, you know, so. Yeah. I am, but they, I mean, each one of these characters has their own thing and like and that's what i feel like sakurai is really good about is even if you have all these sword fly sword fighters yes there are characters that play the same but they also like have their own unique touches to them so plus there's is, always uh, at least like one strong character like one strong and slow and then like one fast and weak <laughs> yeah i mean and it's cool you get to switch between both of them like you did in the game so uh well it's just like yeah. uh you know samus or like uh zelda and Sheik. yeah zelda and Sheik, exactly yeah so there's that. I mean, that was obviously the first announcement of the direct. I mean, so uh, they they started off with that, and I will say I'm not I I'm kind of lukewarm on the visual novels. Uh, I, don't I don't know, know how cool. Yen I mean, feels it, like but it. that it was cool that like 
they're bringing in Detective Club stories like from the Famicom and remastering or remaking them and putting them uh, on the Switch. Like we'll still have to see, I guess, how much it costs. I but, imagine twenty or forty bucks. I don't think it'll be a full price game. <laughs> let's not. But remember, there's two of them. So, but they're also not really long. Yeah, like so. if it's only like two like two hours, like. I don't think we could get get by with charging sixty for it. Uh, I mean, like but three... Nintendo's really bad about overcharging because they can get away with it. So well, this isn't like three No Mario three D World or you know the trilogy of Mario games they put out last year. Yep, but we'll see. I, I like the fact that those uh, they exist. Um, I will say I like the fact that okay, we're just all the manas are getting remade at this point <laughs> or, or remastered or something. Uh, so now Legend of Mana gets an enhanced version. Um, that's did you, coming. Go did at, you play what? those or no? I played Secret of Mana. Um, okay. And I've, the other ones I, I have haven't. one of them on Steam. I never touched it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what sucks is that remake of Secret of Mana wasn't good. But then they redeemed themselves with Trials of Mana, which I still need to pick up at some point. And, I mean, it's good that Legend of Mana is getting a remaster as well. So, again, this is... And people yeah, complain about, like, Vagrant Story and all these other games. Like, these are the people that are at Square right now, are the Saga people and the Mana people. So that's why they're getting all these uh remasters and everything. Get the Vagrant so. Story and Parasite people back in there, then. <laughs> oh, man, I would love the Parasite. Like, seriously, like, take advantage of the fact that Resident Evil is just coming in full force right now. Get another Parasite Eve in there, or remaster the, the old ones. Like, And... Uh- a race to stain of the third birthday. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I mean, uh, whoever's at Square that that is just not seeing that at this point, like, dude, come on. <laughs> you know? Um, I was super surprised because Stubbs the Zombie is one of my favorite, like, Xbox games, that that is coming to the Switch. So, that's I, I cool. Get that, like, I get that too confused with Deadhead Fred. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, fair enough. But, it's still, still cool that that is coming. I mean, Xbox original graphics aren't great at this point, but, you know. Yeah, don't they, doesn't Microsoft own that? Or is it, I thought they uh, did, but I guess apparently not. I think it's like Embracer Group now. Well, either way, it, but... either way, even if Microsoft owns it, it's not like they don't work with Nintendo. So. Right. I mean, okay, so, while well, I look that up. Yeah, um, uh, Aspire published it, so Embracer Group actually owns it now. As of, like, last yeah. two weeks ago. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's coming to other stuff. That's probably just, it's in the direct, so they're not going to announce that it's coming to Xbox and right. whatever. Um, So, you know, it is what it is, but still cool. I was not expecting that at all, and glad that that is, is there. I'm sure my nostalgia is going to be completely destroyed whenever I play that, and it does not meet my memories. <laughs> so... I feel uh, that way about uh, Odd World Strangers Wrath. <laughs> that's probably uh, true on uh, that front. Well, I saw. Uh, I, I think Turok Five is sitting PC or Turok sitting uh, PlayStation Five soon, and it's like, why? Because <laughs> oh, people are talking about it, so why it's a not? 19, you know, it's a nineteen ninety seven, you know, N sixty four game that barely ran good then. Like, you know, it's gonna run fine now. But come on, like yeah, and it's already on everything else. It, you know, it's it's like so. Why is it coming to PS Five? Like somebody said, let's make money. I don't know. Yeah, well, someone said this won't cost a ton and may make some money. Uh, yeah, so why not? Like put it on there. Um, no more Heroes Three getting a release date. Cool. Um, I'm always excited for more Heroes. So August twenty seventh feels like a freaking lifetime away at this. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool that it's coming. Um, yeah. anybody that's wondering why there's no Pokemon, Pokemon Day is literally like a week away, so they're probably saving a lot of Pokemon. They stuff get their own direct. <laughs> Would not be surprised they get their own direct, honestly. Uh, because I feel like 30th anniversary, 35th anniversary, or whatever, 25th anniversary, whatever the hell the anniversary is for Pokemon. Um, I think it might be 30th. Uh, I think it might be 25. Cause I, wasn't Pokemon like 96? Yeah, 96. Okay, so it would be... Maybe 25. 25, 25 then. But either way, like, seriously, if you don't have some kind of... I know everybody's going Diamond and Pearl remake. Uh, I'm scared that you're going to get uh, Gold and Silver, but in freaking Let's Go, which makes it to where I'm not going to play that. 
Um, Let's go wander around the house because you can't go outside anymore. No, like, okay, if they added the option, which I, which, you know, I wish they would have done with the Pokemon, uh, whatever the last one. I can't think of the name right now. Short and Shield of when I battle wild Pokemon, I want to battle them. I don't want to catch, after I catch that first one, like, I don't want to catch a million of them, and that's how I gain experience. Like, that gets on my nerves after a while. Like, it's fun the first couple of times, but after that, it's just like, oh my god. I'd rather just one-hit KO the freaking Pokemon than, than like... I, of course, this is old, old man Sean talking, I don't play Pokemon Go, so whatever. But, like, I feel like the the whole catching thing, the novelty wears off after a while. And you're just trying to get through the game and running into wild Pokemon. Like, I, I get it. You can see them and you can like avoid them, but you still have to grind in that game, just like any other Pokemon game. And I'd rather just do the turn based battles than have to catch the same Pokemon a million times so I can gain experience. And whatever, that's the old thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> that's the one thing that kind of just, it made me stop playing that game after a while. But, um, I you know, stopped playing it because it's a Pokemon game. So, <laughs> like, all right, maybe I'll get it for Anaya. You know, she's she's still a, a Pokemon uh, person, but I'm hoping that if you do these, if do a remake of something, it's in a traditional way and not we're gonna put it into the Let's Go thing. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they do that. Um, I don't know. I mean, you already have Pokemon Snap coming out, so like, I don't know what else. They're not probably not going to do something new outside of like maybe a. Would they bring like do another stadium as as a way to like kind of go with that as well? Since those games kind of were synonymous with the sixty four. Get that? They need to do another Pokemon Pinball. <laughs> what? I mean, they should, right? Damn straight, they should. <laughs> so, like that'd be awesome. I love those pinball games. And Switch is still a portable system, so you could do it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, the one obviously that was, I think, like for me, um, my as outside of Pirate Mithra going to Smash is like uh, the Project Triangle Strategy, which uh, don't be surprised if this game just winds up being called Triangle Strategy, uh, based off the no, octa. It needs to have some stupid, like stupid Latin also in it. They didn't do that for Octopath Traveler, though. Yeah, but that was because it was a test case. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I, uh, I've only gotten through the story portion of the demo. I was trying to play some of it today and, uh, man, that story portion was long. So I didn't get to the actual battle part. I guess I'll talk about that, uh, next time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks cool. It's for the same people from the Octopath crew and yeah, uh, but 2022. So, you know, at least you get the demo to suffice you for a while. <laughs> you can keep your playing it over and over. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Splatoon 3, of course, was the ending game. That's also 2022. Hey, that's cool. The Splatoon has grown so much that that's your ending game. Yeah. You know, um, I, I get to play a Splatoon <laughs> game, though, so I have no opinion on it. <laughs> I, ha- I played very little of it, so I have no opinion on it. I mean, I thought it looked cool. I mean, it looks like they're going like it felt like we're playing Borderlands Splatoon now, uh, but that, that looks cool. Immediately turns me off. <laughs> uh, oh you know, God, no! <laughs> so that's that's cool. Um, I know what really turned people off is the fact that Skyward Sword was the only thing announced for a Zelda anniversary so far. Um, not the game I think everybody wanted, but interesting that they did make a button controls for this game. See, I may, I may like it, or I may try it. I mean, why not? I am not looking forward to that freaking tutorial again. I mean, God, it can't I be hope, any... that, I hope that they just really nuke that. It, it can't. To me, it can't be any worse than uh, Twilight Princesses. I thought that was interminable as well. So, I know, but God, like, I mean, they really need to like, like, uh, pare that down some. It felt like it went on forever. Well, that's why, like, Breath of the Wild basically has no tutorial. Or it's just, just like, here's, here are, like, the four things you can use in the game. That's about it. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it's cool that you still have the motion controls, which I, I we talked about. I totally expected them to still have. And then the fact that they had the buttons. 
So if you remember, I think that that game didn't have like camera controls really. So we'll see what they do for Switch as far as, okay, you're going to have to, that right stick is going to be your sword. So you can't control the camera with it. What are they going to do? Is it going to be mapped to like the D pad or so? Or you may have to like hold a button down for a camera control. Maybe. But I, uh, I mean, I, I'm interested to see what they add to it. Are they going to add something else to make it worth the sixty dollars? Is it really going to be this game? Like you know, Bowser's Fury got added to Mario 3D World. Um, so yeah, we can talk about that later. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I may give it a shot since I didn't, that's one I didn't I never played before. So yeah, I only played it a little bit. So I mean, we'll see. I can understand people are upset if you're a huge Zelda fan, and right now that's all you've gotten announced. And this is like your like lowest ranking Zelda, or whatever. People have the right to be upset I mean, I, here. I fully yeah. imagine that later this year we'll get both Twilight Princess and uh, Wind Waker, whatever the anime one on Wind Switch Waker, as yeah. well. I mean, yeah, go ahead and just absolutely make the Wii U a useless console and just bring all that stuff over. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they could, they could bring over everything if they wanted to, but I don't think they will. Like, they could bring over, you know, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Master on 3DS as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, they could do a 2D collection, which I think that would be cool. I mean, that's a rumor, that's the rumor going around for Metroid is that it's going to be a 2D collection whenever they get around to that. Uh, which is funny because that's the one that's not getting mentioned at all. Like, Zelda got a, something. Pokemon has their own day. When's Metroid going to get their 35th anniversary thing? Never, because so, Japan doesn't like Metroid. <laughs> like, oh, that sucks though. Like, that's a part of Nintendo's. Like, you know, I think it was like after Lord. Super. I mean, Super Metroid sold well. Like, it sold okay in Japan, but it sold really well in America. And like, the Japanese side, Nintendo was like, we don't like making these. They're like, we don't get this at all. So, yeah. Ah, uh, sadness. Yeah. What did you think of that? Like neon white game. Uh, I- I thought it was funny because I immediately recognized the, vo- the, the narrator as Steve Blum. I mean, he does a lot of, he's like the voice of Wolverine and the, the current X-Men stuff. And he does like a lot of like anime narration also, or like an- anime voices. I'm like, I know that dude. Uh, it looks weird. What is it like Overwatch with cards? I mean, like, well, no, cause Overwatch, I mean, Overwatch isn't like a, uh, you know, that's a team based multiplayer shooter. This is like, like, this looks like, it's like a single player thing or, you know, you're just running through levels, throwing down cards. <laughs> yeah. I was really confused. Um, it's made by like the same guy that makes Donut County. So I guess that's not too surprising, but it's still weird. Cause it's like, man, they, this is the guy that made that game too. <laughs> like, all right. Talk about a little bit different. Um, so, I mean, that's like one of those things of, not a lot of people are going to put a game like that into the direct, right? Like Nintendo just does stuff like that. So, uh, give them props for that kind of thing. And also, I just want to mention the fact that Ninja Gaiden is getting the collection. I like it. Uh, I, like I one of love, games. love Ninja Gaiden, the first one. Yeah, that's the one I like. And then two, uh, two, are, two is okay. But yeah, three is two like is bad. fine. Three is just, oh my god, what the hell? How did you ruin that? Like, ah, but, yeah, that's cool that that's coming too. I mean, I, look, if you're looking for like, this is the problem with Nintendo announcing all those big ass games a long while ago and then never talking about them or barely talking about them. And look, obviously COVID affected a lot of things, but it's like not a peep about Metroid 4. And then they had to redo it with retro again. Like, you know, Breath of the Wild, Anuma had to come out before the Skyward Sword announcement go. Oh, there's no Breath of the Wild information. We may be able to give you some later. So that really made me feel like, okay, that's not coming out this year. And, right? Like, do you feel that too? I mean, I knew there wasn't going to be big because like, they just don't really typically do that. I mean, I would say Spelunky 3 is pretty big because that was kind of a shock. But, like, First you know, Zelt, Breath of the Wild 2 and Metroid 4 are somewhat known quantities, you know, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, I think also it's like people forget that this is the first one of the entire year. Like, they're not going to just blow it all out in February. I mean, they still got, you would assume with E3 doing their thing again, that they're going to really go after Nintendo to do a a direct there. So, like, they got to have something to show for June 
right? I mean, so they're not going to blow everything up here. I mean, yeah, could they have put in something about Metroid? Could they have put in something about Breath of the Wild? Could they have done, done more with the collection for Zelda or something like that? Sure. I think there's a lot of, yeah, they could have done more. Um, but I don't know. They decided to do this. They, maybe that's what they have that they could show at this moment. Like, we don't know how much more production got hit because, you know, of, we, of COVID and. Hey, we had to see a really bad DC superhero girls trailer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That was, that was something else. That's, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. You could say that there's a lot of stuff that you're like, all right, whatever. There wasn't this one game that I'm going, oh my god, I gotta play that right now. Other than maybe like Mario Golf. And then the other two big ones are a year away, you know, so that's a thing. I think that's a thing too. It's like your big games that you did announce outside of Skyward Tour, which again, to a lot of people, that's not a big game because they don't like it. Uh, they're a year away. Project Triangle Strategy and and Splatoon 3 are 2022. So everything else that's coming out this year is kind of like, all right, if I don't like Smash, then who cares, right? And there's Mario Golf. And yeah. that's it. <laughs> so I get people that way. But I think also, again, like, don't hype yourself up to the moon for these things. Yeah, because, I don't have... Yeah. Don't have expectations. I mean, just roll with what they have. And if you don't like People it, People oh well. do that all the time. Like, it's like you hype yourself up thinking that they're going to blow up everything in one direct. They're not going to do that, man. Especially with COVID going on and it's affecting Japan more right now than it, you know, even that it is here. Like, you think they're going to blow up everything like in one a go? No, they're going to hold stuff, especially when they can have more time to let it bake in the oven before they show you. So, I don't know. Just I'm not defending them. I'm still saying it was kind of like, all right. I'm just saying, again, this is why you don't go into these things thinking the freaking world is going to go, like, bonkers over whatever gets announced. Just just let roll with it. You still got some cool surprise. Like, Splatoon 3 is still a cool surprise. Like, yeah. you know? So... Yeah, I mean, and they could have probably done more, knowing Nintendo, but thankfully they added themselves, so. But alright, uh, that was the direct. So, we spent a lot of time on that, I thought we were going to spend that much time, but we did, whatever. And, you know, that, those two were really the, the two major, um, anchors so far of, of this week. Everything else is a very, uh, very small fry compared to that. Um, Xbox also had a little bit of, uh, news with adding uh, an FPS boost feature to make the games that already exist work even, uh, better, which that's cool. So some games like, say, Far Cry 4, Sniper Elite 4, Watch Dogs 2, uh, all will have, like, double the frame rate. So, for example, New Super Lucky's Tale, whoever's playing that, is running in 120 FPS now. So, if you have a TV that actually can run that, then cool. Um, so, you know. And that's nice, too, that it's going to have, like, an indicator. So, if you're one of those people that's really about this, you'll know immediately that it's using that. So, and then they're going to keep uh, doing more of it. So, that's that's the important thing, I think, is not so much these first games that get it, but getting other games that, you know, people might actually play uh, are getting it. So, I don't know. All I those, know you don't yeah. care, probably. but all, all that hot Far Cry 4 action. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I just thought it was neat. Neat that they're doing that stuff. It's good that you're continually trying to update and it, make these games better. It's weird that, I mean, I watched a video earlier today, like, about the original Xbox, because it's, you know, the 20, 20th anniversary of that. Yeah. The end of the year. And there aren't a ton of original Xbox games that are like back, you know, forward compatible or they can play on the, you know, Series X. <laughs> no, there's not. But I mean, also, I mean, how many great freaking original Xbox games are there? You'd be more than 25. <laughs> really? Okay. I, I mean, no, I like, well, you know, Stubbs is getting remastered. So now you don't, you just get the, you'll get that. Well, yeah, but the... Stubbs isn't even like Microsoft. So. Well, but, like, not that it's not Microsoft, it's just, like, 
you know, they they were their priority really was the 360 games more than the original Xbox games. So yeah. I don't even know if they're gonna try to go back to that. Of no, they won't. <laughs> they're gonna even try to open that box again of doing more backwards compatibility. We'll we'll see. Um, I want to watch that. I need to. They did a. They didn't. They do like a big documentary on the original Xbox or somebody. Uh, I don't know. Did, yeah, like I want to do that I just, too because I, I have so I many just memories. watched the uh, modern vintage game where he put out like a video earlier this week about like is the Xbox still cool to buy like now? And he's like, hell yes. <laughs> you mod the hell out of that thing easily and run everything on it. <laughs> well, the. A cool thing that Microsoft is doing, which they've done a really great job of continuing to do, is the accessibility um, thing. You know, they did a great job with that controller, and now they're doing, like, an accessibility testing service, which, you know, this isn't free necessarily, uh, but for developers that want to use it, it kind of allows for games to be tested against these guidelines that Microsoft has set. And so, you know, very... People that, uh, you know, this would, this would affect and are, uh, known for, you know, being in this uh, accessibility team are, are gonna be like testing that and being able to make sure that it works for, uh, different kinds of ailments that you may have or just, there's like any issues that you want to resolve. I think that's cool though. Like I think that making gaming way more accessible to anyone is great. I mean, like, it's interactive. It's something that, like, whether you're, you know, blind, whether you have, you know, mobility issues with, you know, coordination or, you know, your hands or whatnot, I think that being able to play a game and and have those, like, whether you're colorblind, you know, all that, having that be in something in the game where you can toggle that on and off, is is fantastic. Look, I know there's going to be games like Dark Souls where oh you can't have a mode that makes it easier for someone to play that. Meh. Hey, you know what? Screw you off. Can, yeah, <laughs> gatekeep all you want to. <laughs> this is this is good. It's good for gaming to be able to open up to more uh, more people and have more things in the UI and all that stuff that is there. So hats off to Microsoft for continuing to do things like this. Um, would be cool to see the other two big uh, console makers uh, do more things like this too. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> well, now to finally top it all off, EA has finally bought officially. Ever, it's all it's over. Officially, EA has bought Codemasters. We've talked about this a few times. Just wanted yep. to mention yeah. it. That a- end of an era. <laughs> and yeah, end of an era. Let's see what winds up happening with Codemasters. What is EA going to do with them? Are they going to still Shut make their franchises? <laughs> God, I hope not. Like, please use them well. Don't, just please don't make them another Need for Speed studio or whatever. Yeah. Like, we don't no, need No one that. wants that. <laughs> we really don't. We don't need that. Like, just move along. <sighs> so, I, I don't know. I'm just tempering my expectations because with EA, you just never know if it's going to be wind up being a good thing or not. I will say with, for EA that Knockout City game looked sort of interesting. I just like, it was kind of disappointing that you show all these different characters and they are all in the same, uh, design style when you get to the actual game. That's that dodgeball so, game? Yeah, that dodgeball game. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually thought that was really terrible. I got like, like really bad Agents of Mayhem vibes off that. Oh thing. no, I totally got vibes like that too. I'm just saying, um, you know, I was kind of intrigued with the, when they had the different kind of characters talk, and then it's like, oh, they're just basically character palettes, cool, whatever, yeah. I guess. I also gave a groan when they showed that Planets vs. Zombies. Oh, no, that was total groan. Like, oh, really? Come on. Especially since really? it's an online-only game. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, you get cool ports like Tales from the Borderlands to Outer Wilds, and you get that. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah. All right, whatever. It's... <laughs> Again, not everything's be for everybody, so um but or yeah. anyone. <laughs> it, it, well, maybe there's some Plants vs. Zombie person that was just waiting for that to be on the Switch, I don't know. <laughs> uh speaking of something that uh maybe people are, are waiting on, uh Avengers is coming to current consoles. 
uh, along with that new Hawkeye DLC on March 18th. Um, you do get a free upgrade if you already have it for PS4 or Xbox One or whatever. Yep. I mean... The slow cool. spiral that game continues. <laughs> Maybe it'll get a bit of a lift with the new consoles, but I doubt it. I Speaking mean, of that, wasn't that like two weeks ago that they had that big EA thing about like, oh, EA's going to decide the fate of Anthem like next week? Wasn't that yeah. last week? <laughs> yep. I don't know. It's decided to wait. Okay. It's like, I, I don't know why. For some strange reason, when you talk about Avengers, Anthem popped into my head. So, I mean, that's what you kind of think about right now, right? Of like, it's oh, not a total failure. It, it, but... It's because both games start with A, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, again, at least Square Enix is continuing to try to do something with it. Um, I just don't, like, I hate it for the team that's, you know, working on Anthem. I hope that EA doesn't just outright just go, ah, forget it, we're canxing this thing. And I think that might have been because they, people started talking about it and, you know, giving them a little bit of bad press about, are you really going to just dump this team after you had them go back to the woodshed, basically, and, and, and have to start working on this again? Like, so... Who knows? Maybe yeah. they're giving him more time at this point. Uh, well, we always seem to have to talk about delays. Uh, the Intellivision Amico, which, if you might remember, was as a console that's getting re- Never coming out. <laughs> re out there again. Um, so, it's, it's gonna come with two controllers and six pre-installed games. Um, do you, I mean, they're a separate podcast. Do you listen or watch the CU podcast at all? I do not. So the two guys, Pat and Ian, are basically, basically almost in like a flame war with Tommy Tellerico, this, you know, the CEO of Intellivision. Yeah. Cause he posted some video like two weeks ago or maybe like a week ago, like playing a game that looks awful. And like the way he was playing it, he was like, he'd be pressing left on the controller and the character would be moving right. Yeah. And vice, like vice versa. And they were like, is someone else playing it, like, you know, off screen, and he's just kind of mimicking the controls, it's not well, or does he have inverted controls? Like, that'd be weird. And it came out, like, earlier this week, or it might have been, like, late last week, going, like, oh, I made that video to troll Ian and Pat. And it's like, dude, don't do that. <laughs> like, you realize that makes you seem like a crazy person. Well, because not just that. Right- it's like, you don't need to make this... Like, you only need to be promoting good things about this old console that you're bringing well, it's like, back. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, I mean, they're like, they're more popular than we are, but they're not like the number one gaming podcast in the world. And it's like, if you're so focused on what these two guys are talking about, like, you realize you're insane then, right? Like, who, who cares? <laughs> when I, I agree with you on that. It's just, I mean, that guy's kind of always been, I mean, uh, he's always bit, been like a little bit eccentric. Ex- like, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna say eccentric. Yeah, like I mean, I actually liked his old game review show back in the day with uh, Victor Lucas. Yeah, uh, no, I agree too. I liked that. Uh, there was a Judgment. Yeah, well, Judgment yeah. Day, but it was like, yeah. part of a, a bigger show called Electronic Playground in like Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like he's gone off the rails somewhat over the past few years, and like this thing in particular, like his like holy war with them, and it's not like. They are not like super negative about it per se. They're just pretty realistic that it seems like a scam or like that he doesn't know what he's doing and he's yeah, a I musician. Mean, it's like, another well, like it's it's gonna be I think it's gonna be like another like the Atari VCS. Like it's gonna come out and then people are gonna be like, All right, whatever and you know. I mean like yeah. that Turbo Graphics sixteen thing, I feel like has gotten some love, you know. Um, of course, the other stuff that comes out with the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo or whatever, obviously that is, is more sought after because that has games that people really, um, right. know something the, about and are nostalgic about. But this, this thing has like, yeah. an, like a new Earthworm Gym on it and that, you know, people kind of want to play that. But like that's literally about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you're also promoting what, like educational stuff and which that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah. I feel like. You're also asking for half of what, uh, the regular consoles console. cost. And then also, yeah. like, you're very close to what the Series S costs. I mean. Right. And exactly. that, you can just get that in Game Pass for like, 
uh, fifty or for like seventy or sixty five more dollars. I mean, you know, so I don't know, man. I know you're you're including six games and two controllers, but I don't. That's kind of a hefty price for. Yeah. Anyway, that, that's my two cents on it. Like, yeah. I think it'll come out and bomb horribly personally. So. Yeah, I mean, I look. I don't want it to do bad. I mean, you want all these things to be able to to do well, but it's just. There's certain things that you look at and go, man, not well, not the best. The biggest thing is like, who remembers the Intellivision brand? I mean, we're you know, we're me and you are both like in our mid thirties. I never fucking touched one. I don't know I about didn't you. Touch it either. Like that, so that, you know, I think they would be older than us. Like I think you yeah, have to be like your forties. Like, like, I think Tommy's in his forties. He he has to be. And it's yeah. like, okay, why is this thing like an educational console for forty year olds? Like, and it's like what. It, it's going to be for their ki- like, people's kids. And like, like, you can get a tablet them. for less than that and educate your... Oh, do... I don't know. Oh, it, oh, Tommy's 53. So it's like, okay, yeah. But then, like, what are you going to do like, when your kids are in school? Like, one kid's like, oh, I'm playing Mario. And the kid goes, oh, I'm playing Call of Duty. The, your, the kid at the Amica goes, I'm playing Asteroids. It's like, go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just like, okay, you can have some kind of appreciation for, like, the old stuff, but it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, this is something that could, you promote it like all the people do with all the older, older stuff. Yeah. And it's there if you want it. I, I, I just, it's just a, it's just a bad, like, he's just bad trying to make this thing feel like it's going to be bigger than it actually is. I mean, it's just like, right. I don't not think since, so. Not since the Ouya. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, don't don't try to make it into the next like, oh, Nvidia GeForce or other thing that's gonna kind of be there and people are gonna be talking about. It. Like, no, this is gonna be a thing that's gonna come out, and whoever the heck is out there that really wants a freaking Intellivision Amico will yeah. get it, and then that's it. Like, unless Tommy himself is gonna pay. Well, when not, never mind, you can't do that. So I'm just saying, like, unless yeah. you know, Tommy is gonna like make deals. Where where he's gonna send these sites free? Oh, he's uh, definitely, yeah, he definitely yeah, yeah. Like sent, try to get IGN and Gamespot and everybody else to review the console just to get it out there and have people talking about it. It won't, uh, no, maybe. it won't be them. He'll send it to you know his YouTube family or you know his fans on YouTube, and they'll give it all high scores because of course they will. They're not objective, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, he could do that too, or like you know retro. YouTube channels or, or whatever, but it's like, I don't know, it's expecting this thing to, to blow up or yeah, whatnot. I mean, cool. I like, look, great that you're doing something to try to have educational stuff in there. Like, cool that you're going to have like 30 exclusive games at launch and all that stuff. But I mean, like, I think it's cooler that we're seeing stuff like that Dragonborn game that's getting made in like the Game Boy style. Right. Then, then something like this. This, I don't know. That's just me, anyway. Maybe there's somebody out there listening that goes, "Well, y'all were just bagging on the television here. Like that was the greatest console it, ever." It, it'll be you know, Tommy. <laughs> he'll kill email in. <laughs> it's. I mean, I would so like if that happens, we're gonna like read it on air. Oh, speaking of that, I'm supposed to. Damn it. Okay. Well, remind me, Mark. Next week we gotta be, you know. Yeah. Selling some. Some ads. Uh, so I forgot. All right. So, but e- either way, whatever, dude. Like, look. Moving on to other delays. Yeah, let, let, moving know. on to, to other, um, things. You know, we talked about Amazon last week. Amazon, once again, I mean, look, I think they realized from the first time with Crucible, like, if you're going to release something, make sure it's good. Like, Especially when you have no cachet with gaming. Uh, Yeah. Well, you're talking about their new world MMO. It got delayed till, I think, August, the guy said. Yep. August 31st. And I watched the thing. I watched his video and I was like, this looks, this looks pretty, but it was like three minutes in and I'm like, I haven't yet to see any gameplay. (laughs) Like, what's going on here? Maybe that's why, because he realized that. I mean, they showed game. They started showing gameplay like later on or like eventually. But I'm just like, shouldn't you have been doing this a little earlier? Like, I don't care about some mythical land in which some empress is trying to raise like some demonic army. It's like show what the gameplay is, or you know, 
Yeah, I mean, it's already been delayed. Like, it's now going to come out a year after it was originally supposed to be. Yeah. So, it's supposed to come out August of last year. Then it's supposed to come out this year, like, by, I guess, March or something. And then now it's coming out August, so it'll probably get delayed again. I mean, you know, I don't know. In a world where we already have people trying to fight with Final Fantasy and WoW, the the ones that are around to be relevant... I yeah, don't know that an MMO is the best. I mean, the last MMO I can think of was it was a sci-fi one. It had like wild in the title. The enhance, the enhanced, or what was it? That one that no, had the show, Defiance, no. or Wildstar. That was it. Oh, Wildstar. Okay. That came out in like 2014, and then it went offline like 2016 or whatever. Yeah, and then the Star Wars one and well, Which, that's Republic still around, around, right? That's still free. To, yeah. That's just free to play, though. That's why it's still around. And, like, Korea comes out with an MMO every, like, few years, which is good for the furry crowd, but that's about it. Well, and then you got the Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so... And Fallout and, 76. Know, Fallout 76, and Guild Wars is still around. Uh, ESO is still around. Like, Wait, it's Elder Scrolls? <laughs> or not ESO. Uh, what's it, what am I thinking of? Uh, that The old one, the really old one, the, the oldest one there is. Uh, what's it called? EverQuest. EverQuest, yes. And, um, but yeah, most of these are like 10 years old. And Terra, or whatever, you know? still gets updates. I swear I still get emails for Terra. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I don't know. It's like, unless it's going to be absolutely free to play, which I imagine Amazon, Amazon with that money, they could afford to do it. It, it would be nice yeah. if it was like, it's, you know, it's a subscription, but if you have Amazon Prime, then it's free to play. Okay, yeah. That could be a way to get people to do Amazon Prime for a month or, you know, you could literally do it because you've never gotten Amazon Prime before. It's free. Right. So, I mean, why not? Uh, speaking of uh, the competitors with Amazon, Apple is still, of course, they're still engaged in this legal fight with Epic um, over all that stuff with the Apple Store and yeah, and all of that. Which, Fortnite, um, yep. With Fortnite. And so now this, Apple is trying to get, you know, Valve and Steam uh, involved. Yeah. They're, tr- uh, they're trying to basically rope. They're trying to get, like, subpoena Valve's records for Steam sales figures to, like, somehow fight against Epic. And uh, it's just I, I read it and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, OK, why so would- they're. Yeah. So let, let's just, cause this one I feel like is one you have to kind of give background on. It's like, so in November 2020, Apple subpoenaed Valve uh, to provide significant amounts of commercial data about Steam sales over multiple years. Um, Valve points out that Fortnite is unavailable on Steam and Epic has publicly and equivocally stated it will not offer Fortnite on Steam unless Valve changes its business model. As revealed on a joint discovery letter, letter, um, you know, they, uh, PC Gamer is the one that, uh, saw this as well. Apple is seeking a range of commercial Steam data to help use in its case against Epic, which centers on its competitive practices. Um, and it says it's relevant because Steam is a competitor against Epic. Like, whatever. You can say it's relevant all you want to. It's like, uh, I don't know if I, that is, makes I, sense, I'm, but. I'm dumbfounded that, like, the subpoena that Apple filed went through. That'd be like, Put it this way. It'd be like if I was going to sue you and then you went to Yen's to get like information on me that he doesn't know <laughs> or, you know, that he, he's not, he's not involved in a lawsuit either, you know, in either, in any event. So it's just, yeah, I mean, like, this is thing. dumb. Like I, I, I think uh, this is just going to wind up being like nothing. I don't, they're going to get into this like big war and then they're eventually going to uh, Fortnite's going to wind up back on the store and we're going to, I, I I mean, I really hope it. I, I, I mean, aside from this dumb, dumb ass thing, I'm still firmly pretty much in Apple's camp, which is surprising to me since I don't like Apple, but like Epic's, you know, brain about 30% cut. It's like, if you pay that on every storefront aside from yours, like you don't see you going after like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo. Like, good yeah, luck with exactly. That. I mean, and hey, you it's know, not, it's every not game has to take that cut. It's, it's also not competitive. If Epic wanted to, they could make their own phone or make their own, you know, 
marketplace. Well, I don't know I about phone. Can't... I mean, they have made their own marketplace. It's just only on PC right now. So yeah, but it's like, uh, hey, you can make you can make your own Epic OS and release some stupid phone that has it, and that no one will, can run Fortnite, and that's about it on it. I mean, that I think that's that's part of it. So like they know that they're not going to be able to compete in that arena, right? Like, it's pretty much there are only certain companies that are going to fight there. And even then, I mean, some of them are, it's pretty much a Samsung Android something and right. Apple world. I mean, even the Google ones are not anywhere near. I mean, there's a reason why Microsoft got out of phones. Okay. It was yeah. a losing endeavor. Uh, I did see point, recently so. that in the like PC marketplace or, you know, windows is still the number one operating system, but number two is actually Chrome. Of course, yeah, because their Chromebooks are cheap yeah. and and they Plentiful do what you need stuff. them to do. Yeah, I mean, like most people see. Like that's the thing is, like most people are online now. So like the fact that you have to require online to use a Chromebook is like nothing. So right. I mean, and honestly, the amount of things that you can do with a computer without being on the internet now is getting to the point where it's like nothing is slim. Yeah. Even even Word and all that stuff is internet powered now, if, unless you buy a an actual disc version. A five hundred dollar copy of Office. <laughs> yeah. So, like, why not? <laughs> why not yeah. just get the the Chrome? Um, like that's what I would tell people. Unless you need a laptop to do something super powerful, I would go buy that for somebody. Like that's the ones we use at the shelter. And they do the very basic minimum that you would need, to, like email and school stuff and whatever. So. Well, yeah, that's what like schools hang out to, uh, like disadvantaged kids now. Like if you don't have a laptop yeah. or computer, you get a Chromebook. Is that and it's super small, so that like, you can take it anywhere, and that helps too. Um, so it's almost like a little bitty. It's almost like a tablet, but it's a computer. Um, well, it's like that computer they tried to make like ten years ago, like one kid per laptop or like one laptop per kid or whatever. Like. Mm-hmm. It's just a yeah. fruition of that, but not in a goofy ass looking case. Yeah, I mean that for the things that you'll say like Google doesn't do well, that's one thing that they have adapted and done a lot well. I mean, so uh, you know, if we look at Sony; they've had those bios for a long time and not doing great. So, uh, that being said, uh, getting off that, I think like Valve in the like goofy story of the week, um, the developer. They, what's the name of this developer? Very positive. Very. So, uh, a developer, um, named their company very positive on purpose so they could trick players in believing that it was, uh, the review rating. And of course, Valve, you know what? Hats off to Valve for this. It's like, really, we don't need more BS than we already do. And quite frankly, like, Steam is, um, a great, actually a, a very good place for reviews compared to like, say the user score on like Metacritic or whatever. Like, if you're looking at a game on Steam, you have some pretty good reviews to read from people that just yeah, play the game. Uh, unless like so. the game gets review bombed or something. Then. <laughs> right, but like, I don't okay. ever look at the user score on a uh, Metacritic because I'm like, oh, most of these people that are reviewing this here don't. But- even yeah. Steam, like, they recognize when something like that happens, which is good. Or they, they show you, like, the aggregate of a review over the course of the the life of the game, so. Right, exactly. So, I mean, but, uh, really, it, this is funny because it's just like, they changed the developer and publisher fields of the Steam page for the words very positive, so that people would, uh, kind of mistake it for the reviews. And, yeah. and it's, uh, they, the game that they made, or that they were making is called Emoji Evolution. Uh, so, I mean, I get it. Like, reviews are important on Steam or whatever, but this is silly. Yeah. Come on, man. And the guy, the guy, like, the developer, like, I don't know what, what the big problem is. It's like, you are intentionally misleading people, you yeah, idiot. Man. Like, come on. <laughs> like, we've had this conversation about several times about, you know, CD Projekt Red did this, like, the companies are getting bashed for this kind of thing. Like, don't, it's already hard enough to, I get it, that it's hard to find things on the Steam store. They have so many, uh, different games that come out or whatever. It's like, but you're intensely doing that on purpose. You know, it's, that's not, that's not funny and it's not, it's stupid. It's like, did you think yeah. you were going to get away with it the way Valve and really, uh, 
looks at things, or especially once something gets out there in the media, they're really good about responding. So, right. Yeah, once Patrick uh, Clever broke it, brought it up, you know the hammer's yeah. going to come down eventually. It, yeah, it's going to come down. It's like it's it's it's, it's like uh, as soon as anybody goes out there and posts that, hey, I made this game based off a Nintendo property. Oh, you did? Yeah, here comes the lawsuit. Yeah. Like, get ready. And what happens? Like, the day later. Oh, well, the game went down. I'm sorry. Nintendo came and said no. So, suck. <laughs> expect. Uh, people are funny, man. Um, and then, uh, Saudi Arabia, because, uh, the, you know, Mohammed bin Salam is a big proponent of Call of Duty. And actually, talking about the positive impact, hopefully it stays that way and not that we're talking later that he's trying to, you know, take over video game companies like Tencent, um, has for the, for, you know, That's for a lot of these years. companies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they've acquired like over three billion worth of stock in EA, Activision, and Take Two. So, hey, you know, I don't know how much this is going to help or hurt things, but I guess. Cool maybe for him that have, he has the money to do that. Maybe not have quite so many Call of Duty games based on Middle Eastern conflicts. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> he's still playing them, though, so he yeah. can't really... It's not like he's out there boycotting them and saying, oh, no, you can't uh, can't have this. Like He's playing right. these games, and he's saying how positive they are. So, you know, if, they, if that's the goal, eventually, you're, you're kind of not helping yourself there, dude. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so you have, uh, completed your review of, uh, Super, um, Super Mario World, uh, 3D World, 3D World Bowser's Fury. Yep. What are your, uh, I guess, final thoughts or? Uh, I don't really like 3D World that much. Oh, you uh, don't? Uh, I don't like the perspective, like the camera. Like it's a 3D game, but it's kind of locked on like a 2D, like a, you know, you don't really see, it's not behind the back. It's all kind of from, mm-hmm. from like a diorama camera angle, you know? Okay. Uh, so like you, the goal in each stage is to find these like three hidden green st- or three stars, but like the camera gets in the way of that a lot of the time because you can't see what's on, you know, if it's hiding behind a wall or, you know, on top of a building or something. Uh, I mean, it's still a fine game. It's kind of like a real throwback game compared to like the current Mario games. Yeah. But I just, yeah, the perspective just kind of really bugs me personally. What about uh, uh, Bowser's Fury? So I beat that. That's one I actually beat. I didn't beat 3D World. I mean, I know there's like secrets and stuff. Like once you un- like really beat it, um, Fury's Road, uh, not Fury Road. Fury, uh, Bowser's Fury. Uh, that's cool. It's a slight game. Like I beat it. Like the main goal is to like get 50 of these sh- 50 shines, and then like you quote unquote beat it, but then the game like opens up and you get to collect 50 more for like the true ending. Um, yeah, I just beat like, the like Odyssey. Yeah. I defeat the first part of it. I'm not, you know, that second one. Uh, it's cool. It's open world. It's about three to four hours long. Uh, so I imagine if you want to like 100% it'd probably be like double the time. Uh, it's, yeah, it's open world. Like, it's just cool. Like, it's all in like this big, like, lake environment. Uh, each, like, island has like four, like five main goals for you to do. There's plenty of secrets between like islands, like, in the, you know, in the lake itself. Yeah. Uh, Bowser shows up occasionally and wrecks shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's one of the few problems I don't like problems with the game is you have these like Bowser blocks in every like island and mm-hmm. they are blocks that only Bowser can break with those like flame bread. And if he's if he's been vanquished, he comes back and he's like basically on like a five minute timer, I think. But to break these blocks, you need him for him to do it. So you just have to stand there and wait five minutes for him to, you know, come back alive. And it's like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But other than that, it's a really good game. It's short. Uh, like, I, it's hard to classify what it is. Like, would you call it a game? Or, cause I, I saw people on Twitter going like, what is it DLC or an expansion? And it's like, no, it feels I don't like think it's just that. like an extra, yeah, like an extra DLC they got put into the game. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's not DLC because you don't download it. <laughs> like, yeah. but I mean, the thing about that, it's like, it's a, th- it's a fully 3D game. It's like, you know, Sunshine, or it's like, uh, Galaxy or Odyssey or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just fun, I think. I, I liked it way more than I thought I would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the important part is that you liked it. And, yeah. you know, it makes it worth it, right? So, you know, um, 
Like that's that's the thing is they it's an addition to like you're buying it for 3D World, but they made that and made it worth the yeah. that sixty dollar package. You know? So yeah. and it, I, I think it I mean, personally it's I think it's the better of the two. So I mean that and that's the thing too, like right, if you would have paid the sixty for just three D World, I think you would have been disappointed, but the fact that you can go to Bowser's Fury and be like, Oh man, I really enjoyed this I think it yeah. makes it a a fine package, and I think that's the the big thing that I think a lot of people are upset about with um with the Skyward Sword announcement of like okay, it would have been fine if you had other Zelda games you also announced along with it, but the fact that you just announced Skyward Sword I think is what like leaves that taste them out because yeah, you added the button controls and everything, but all the stuff about the game itself outside of the controls is what people are remembering right now, and most of that was not fond memories. Sure, but so. I mean, they just they just showed the first trailer, so you have to imagine later on they may say, oh, we shortened the tutorial or we added, you know, Samus to this thing or something weird like that. <laughs> and I think it also kind of felt like, yes, it's true, some things from Breath of the Wild that wound up being in Breath of the Wild are in that game as well, but it's like, Trying to, you know, connect the two is also like, oh, we're just trying to make up for the fact that we couldn't provide you with any information about Breath of the Wild 2, the game that you really want. So, uh, here's a little bit of connection. So maybe you'll buy this. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I can understand a little bit of the vitriol towards that. But Nintendo has been good about if they're going to release these uh, games, they're going to give you something... Uh, worth really enjoying out of it, and I think they did that here, so that's good. I've got to put that on my list of, okay, well, maybe when I finally get that see, Mario collection, I'll get this too. See, that, this game may actually be good for you, because, like, you have a daughter. Yeah. So you guys can play together. Like, to me, yeah. it meant nothing to me, because. <laughs> yeah. And I, oh, I think it has online play, but it's like, oh, I'm not going to get, I don't want to have to get, like, convince the to play it. And yeah. And also, We've not had great online Nintendo experiences, so. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Is, yeah, like online Nintendo. I mean, that's gonna be fun with uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Is how's that? Yeah. Online gonna play? Monster Hunter actually <laughs> works. Like there, some games do work fine. Like Splatoon works fine. Yeah. Uh, or Tetris Ninety Nine works fine. But like you yeah. know, uh, oh, what was it? That Mar- uh, Smash Brothers is kind of hit or miss, and Mario Maker Two is a disaster. <laughs> It's not great for that, yeah. Yeah. You playing anything else or no? I have not. Like, yeah, I've, I've been trying to just finish East. Um, I basically just started that, I uh, probably triangle thing and I'm waiting for, for, you know, the, just like you are playing the waiting game right now of well, yeah. this week. Uh, this week it is for Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, like I said, if you got that digital deluxe version, you can well, you know, you can play it right now, which is one of the cool, th- I mean, more, te- more game, more games should do that. Like, if you're paying for this, you should also be able to play a little bit early too. That'd be cool if more games start adapting that. Um, not that you need to overcharge, I think. It, I mean, also provide something else in your digital deluxe uh, editions, but that'd be cool if more people uh, did that thing. And, you know, so, uh, I think, uh, I mean, there's that. There's the Capcom Arcade Stadium that got released the, the moment the Direct was was finished, which it's free, but then they also, like, charge you separately for all these other, for these old-ass, like, super old games. So we'll see how that goes. Huh? Um, Minute Fun Racer is out, which is cool. The fact that Minute is getting a racing game. Uh, that Blizzard Arcade Collection that we talked about is is out now. Um, then coming this week is, uh, a cool platformer called Horn Knight, another one called The Tori, which is, you're starring a, a bear that runs around, that Ghost and Goblins, uh, remake, uh, comes out as well, and then probably Default 2 and Retromania Wrestling, so, uh, some good stuff, uh, coming at the tail end of February, and then we are on to March with yep. stuff, so... Yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I mean, are you still gonna see if you can get uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon for the PS uh, Five or? Well, it's gonna. Yeah, you're just gonna yeah, just upgrade. Waiting for, 
I already, have it, I already have it for PS4. I have, I have a disc copy, so I'm just waiting, just for, waiting the, for the upgrade, right? Yeah. The only thing I played, the only thing I played was the Room Four, which is cool. That is cool. So I mean, yeah, you know. So hopefully, you'll you'll get to enjoy that, and we can talk about it, and yeah, we'll see uh, how that goes. I I'll be uh, excited for you know when Stubbs comes out next month. I don't we'll see how much they they're gonna wind up charging for it. And sixty bucks. <laughs> no, I hope not. Don't charge that much. <laughs> so, but uh, all right. I mean, hopefully you uh, have your own thoughts on the direct and what you thought about uh, with the announcements. And if you like Blizzard games, uh, perhaps you watch the, the BlitzCon. You can uh, let us know your thoughts. We have an email at www.gmail.com. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter at Humanity Plague, at WTM Sean, at WTM Network, or the whole thing. Uh, you can go bug Jens at Aperture Silence, uh, as well. Um, thank you always to Jens for editing the show, uh, cause he makes us sound way better than we would if he didn't edit the show. So, thank you so much. Go listen to him and Randy talk about, uh, what's the thing that they did this week? I forgot now. They did, uh, was it another thing? But either it had Resident this... Evil or Jedi yeah, Fallen Order. Yeah, the last of the Resident Evil. No, they did. Jedi Fallen Order was the last game they talked about. Um, they did. I think it was the last of the Resident Evil movies uh, for the... They're at the movies uh, yeah. thing this week. Yeah, it's uh, Retribution. Um, no, it's not. that's not the last one. There's still that final chapter. Uh, that... Let's just say Resident Evil 6. <laughs> Yeah, it's Resident Evil. Good God, they shouldn't yeah, have that ter- many damn it's all movies. Terrible. No, that's <laughs> why. Why are you torturing people uh, with this? Uh, but no, um, it cool for that. Like, it's amazing to me that uh, Jens and Randy made it through. <laughs> but uh, they're they're watching these things for so that uh, you know you don't have to. But um, no, definitely. Uh, go check them out on there. Of course, that's part of W10 Network. You just want to download the whole feed so you get, you know, this show, their show, and of course, <clears throat> all the other stuff that we do, um, with, uh, the Radless crew doing all the entertainment, uh, stuff. So they, they review almost pretty much like any movie that comes, comes out that's like, you know, worth it on. And they'll even do some, some, uh, neat different stuff that you weren't expecting too. So, um, I wish to uh, check them out and yeah, go check out that w10net.com. Mark is going to have his, uh, two reviews. I'm pretty soon I'm almost done with the, the skull one and then I'll get to his, uh, Mario 3D world. And Randy finally posted the medium one. So I'll get to that too. And then I got to get working on mine so I can just focus on bravely default and, and not have to do something else. So a good, basically go from one RPG to the next one. Awesome for me. But the, Short games. Uh, yeah, just the short games. At least this one's on the Switch, so I could uh, realistically, I guess, play that uh, with more capacity than, than say, the East game. Um, but, yeah, so until next week, uh, which we will definitely have some talk about Persona, Strike, Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, until then, we will uh, see you guys uh, later. Don't forget to review us. Later. Peace.